Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Once again we are back and we have another powerful clip. This one is with Dr. Ridgely, the manager of Muhammad's Farm. And we're going to post up that link uh, so that you can go and visit that link. He's going to be speaking on the architects of white supremacy. We also encourage all of you who are watching to subscribe to the Final Call newspaper. Go to www.finalcall.com. Look for the subscription button down at the bottom and subscribe to the Final Call, a newspaper that is designed for the resurrection and the rise of the black man and woman. We always encourage you to support Knowledge for Life. We are a non-profit 501c3. Uh, you can go to the link that we're going to provide and look for the donation button. Uh, if you have deep pockets, go ahead and donate a thousand. If you have shallow pockets, go ahead and donate five or one dollar. Uh, visit our networking site, join the site, and with always, we uh, encourage you uh, to be active in your community. With that, I want to leave you as I came before you in the greeting words of peace of Assalamu Alaikum. One of the terms that Mr. Farrakhan used was the term architecture of white supremacy. Dr. Ridley, can you lead off our conversation by explaining to the audience what the architecture of white supremacy is? Testing, testing, okay. Assalamu alaikum. For the name of Allah, for the lips of the merciful. Um, first of all, I'd like to just, you know, we'll be talking about a lot of things you can find in this new book, Defending Farrakhan. And in case you don't know why we should defend Farrakhan, we should defend Farrakhan because Farrakhan is in trouble only because he's been defending us. <laughs> He is our best defense. He's defending us all over the world. So that's why we defend Farrakhan, because he defends us. Right. Now, Mr. Farrakhan described something called the architect of white supremacy. Now, in nature, a building like an anthill, you don't need an architect to build an anthill because it's by nature. You don't have to have an architect to build a tree. But when you deal with white supremacy, you need a human architect because it is an artificial construct to hold down a force, a superior human force. That's the black man and woman of America and all over the world. The Alam Elijah Muhammad teaches us that history is above all our studies the most attractive and best qualified to reward our research. Now, uh, Psychologists, sociologists, they tried to say that the condition of black people in America is due to some type of post-slavery syndrome. But suppose that our condition is not the cause of something that happened 150 years ago. Not just that, but suppose that there's been a group of people scientifically, continually, aggressively working out a plan wherever we, everywhere we turned, there they were blocking what we were doing. See, that the whole piece of history that you have missed, that we have missed. And this is what came out with the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. We found out that the Jews started down south, they started selling slaves down south during slavery, and then after slavery, they had us on the, the fields doing the sharecropping under, underneath them. Now, we're in a psychological war. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad quoted in the great book, Message to the Black Man, uh, a Mr. Henry Berry from a member of the Virginia House of Delegates in 1832. And he said, quote, Mr. Dr. Elijah Muhammad, quote Mary, we have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light may enter the slave's mind. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. They would then be on a level with the beasts of the field and we should be safe. These are architects. Slavery, as brutal as it was, 
was not able to bring the black man and the black woman down to such a subhuman state, nor break their will to be free, independent, productive members of society. In fact, in another recent book by the Historical Society called Jews Selling Blacks, we find that not all slaves were just field hands. I quote from you a advertisement in 1857 for a auction, included in the auction, quote, were valuable carpenters, millwrights, engineers, coopers, mill hands, blacksmith, boat hands, and house servants. Now, where did the blacks learn engineering? <laughs> did, we, did we pick it up swinging from trees? At that time, before 1862, there were no schools in the South that taught engineering. The only school, one school in all of America taught engineering, and that was West Point. And the practice from the South did not go to West Point. So where did we get our engineering from? It's because they went over there and they captured a civilized people. The people who had construction, the people that built the pyramids, the people who built the Nile, the Nile River, one day I get into that. These are the people that they brought over here. And now Brother Leonard Jeffries and uh, other people like uh, George and G.M. James, who's brought us our history of the Nile Valley civilization and what these people stole from us to bring themselves out of the caves. But that wasn't good enough. When they came over here, they couldn't just take the knowledge they stole from us. They had to come and bring us over here to build a heaven for them while they live and we suffer. So, and after slavery, you see, if we were just some savages, if we were just ignorant, stupid people, then all they had to do was just let us go. We didn't have nothing. Leave us alone. We should have died in the wilderness. We should have been running back begging them. But that's not what happened. We didn't revert to savagery. We started building schools. We started building roads. We took the knowledge even had a farming, we built, we bought 16 million acres of land. They never gave us our 40 acres of a mule. But in 45 years after slavery, from 1865 to 1910, we bought 16 million acres of land and we farmed it. But not only that, we used our engineering skills from 1865 to 1899. I'm going to read you a list of our inventions and innovations, patents, or records. The baby button, bicycle frame, chamber commode, clothes dryer, doorknob, egg beater, electric lamp bulb, elevator, fire extinguisher, fountain pen, golf tee, guitar, horse horseshoe, ironing board, lawn board, lawn sprinkler, mailbox, mop, peanut butter, pencil shop, phone transmitter, refrigerator, stove, street sweeper, tricycle, and typewriter. Now, to manufacture and distribute just these, what would have been the course of history for us? But instead of being helped or just left alone, we were betrayed over and over again by an enemy in America sometimes posing as our friend. It took an evil architect of white supremacy to use politics, tricks, brute force, and fabricated historical lies to stop the rise of black people and force them back onto the cotton plantations. They did all of this while isolating us from the international community. We were isolated by this wicked beast masquerading as a human being. And then they did one of the dirtiest tricks ever been done on a nation's people, to their own people, you and I, out of slavery, is called the Compromise of 1877. We want to talk to you a little bit about that compromise. Thank you very much. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for